Today's lesson is on percent error. We've been talking a lot about trying to be accurate and trying to be precise with our measurements. And percent error allows us to measure how accurate we actually are being. So percent error measures the accuracy of the data we collect. The formula that we are going to use to find percent error is going to be this. So our percent error is going to equal our absolute value of the true value. And the true value is um, what the actual value we should be getting. So you could look this up online usually. Uh, minus the experimental value, which is what we get in our experiment, all divided by the true value times 100%. So one thing that is key to remember about this is that we have our absolute values right here. So our percent error is always going to be positive. So if you do your calculations and you come up with a negative answer, probably just switch it to the positive because the absolute values make it a positive answer. So I think the best way to learn this is just by going into some examples. So let's jump into some examples here. So we'll move this up to the top. Uh, in one example, I measured the mass of a quarter. And when I measured it, I used the mechanical scale and I got 5.59 grams. And then I looked online to see how much a quarter should actually weigh what the mass of an actual quarter is. And I got, I found 5.67 grams. So we could plug these directly into our equation here. So it would be absolute value. 5.67 grams minus five point five nine grams divided by our true value, which is what we found find online, so five point six seven grams all times 100%. So let's simplify this in the middle. Uh, if we do 5.67 minus 5.59, we get 0 0.08 grams divided by 5.67 grams times 100. And then we could stick this into a calculator, 0 0.08 grams divided by 5.67 grams is going to be equal to 0 0.0141 times 100%. And our answer will be 1.4, oops, 1.41 percent error. So this would be our answer. So if you think you got it, I'm gonna go over two more. And if you think you got it, you can read the question and try to solve it on your own. And if you don't have it yet, you could just work it out with me in the video. So again, I took the mass of a penny and I measured it on, on the mechanical scale. And then I went and I looked up what an actual penny weighs online. And when we find the percent error, it's gonna be exactly the same way. So our percent error is going to equal absolute value and our true value of 2.50 grams minus our experimental value. So on a mechanical scale, I found it was only 2.41 grams divided by the true value.
times 100%. So if we do that math, we find that this is 0 0.09 grams divided by 2.50 grams times 100%. And if we plug this now into a calculator, 0 0.09 divided by 2.50, we should get 0 0.036 grams times 100%. And then that would equal 3 point six zero percent so our error for this uh, measurement that we made was three point six percent error all right and I got one more again I recommend trying to solve this on your own and then you can just skip through the video to check to see your answer um, but if you're still having trouble, you can follow along. So this time I just tried to use a ruler to measure how the diameter of a quarter or measure the distance across a quarter. Uh, so we got our, our percent error is equal to absolute value of 2.4. 426 centimeters. So that's the actual value of the diameter of a quarter minus what I used, uh, what I found it was using a ruler. So 2.45 centimeters divided by 2.426 centimeters. And then to make it a percent, we just got to multiply by 100%. So we're going to just do the math now. You can plug it into a calculator. And we'll get negative 0 0.024 divided by 2.426 times 100%. And then remember, we'll stick this in a calculator and our absolute value means that we're going to get a positive number here. So we'll get 0 0.00989 times that 100%. And our answer is just going to be 0.990% error. So pretty close. So one last thing about percent error is that the lower the percent error, the more accurate you are. So given the tools that we use in our class, your percent error should be less than 10%. So anything under 10% is gonna be a pretty accurate measurement in, in this class. If you're hitting over 10% in your percent error, you wanna start questioning how you're measuring uh, and try to be a little bit more careful.